A new hope with a new administration as thousands of immigrants line up at America's southern border. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee in for Barbara Lee Edwards. This comes in light of two recent tragedies involving migrants. Just Monday in Texas, eight people were killed when the truck they were riding in crashed during a chase with authorities. And earlier this month, 13 people were killed in that horrific crash in Imperial County. As the numbers grow at the border, the Secretary for Homeland Security says adults and families are being turned away under a pandemic related health rule. But that's not the case for children who arrive alone. CBS News has learned there are more than 13,000 children now in U.S. custody. This is a growing problem along the entire U.S.-Mexico border, but what does it look like along San Diego's part of the border? News 8's Brandon Lewis gives us a look. Carlo and Marcella, just on the other side of the Ped West Bridge in Tijuana is a growing migrant camp with asylum seekers who are seeking entry into the United States. While it is reaching a crisis level all across the southwest border, what we're seeing here in the San Diego and Tijuana area is nothing compared to what's happening in Texas. In the shadow of the U.S. border wall, hundreds of migrants are waiting in Tijuana for their chance to claim asylum in San Diego. Volunteers and nonprofits are scrambling to feed and care for the swelling numbers. We also go out to different migrant shelters, so a lot of our work is with asylum seekers, migrants, and then also um, just anyone who is by the border and needs medical attention, we, will, um, we won't turn them away. The Biden administration is urging migrants to stay away until infrastructure is in place, but some say they're optimistic because of the president's softer stance on immigration. Most of us come here because we're being persecuted. We have been tortured or for other reasons, but we want to send a message to the U.S. authorities that we don't want anything forcibly. We are going to follow the laws and are under your orders, and what we want and what we are waiting for is a clear answer. Still, Wednesday morning, Customs and Border Protection conducted what they they call a readiness exercise. This is usually a drill to practice how to respond if large groups try to overrun the border, and it's not so far-fetched. Homeland Security says it's on pace to apprehend the most people in 20 years. Single adults are up by more than double. Still, that's less than the national average. The biggest challenge is unaccompanied children. San Diego is seeing a 64% rise in kids, and while that seems high, it's less than the rest of the nation, especially in parts of Texas, where it's a three-fold increase. Adults and families are turned back under pandemic health rules, but there are 13,000 children, many from Guatemala, in U.S. custody awaiting a hearing, and many more are expected. The urgency is to take care of the people who are already here. I insist they should not be evicted, they should not be returned, because this is a migration that is coming to save their lives. The Biden administration and Congress are still working on a comprehensive immigration package. Meanwhile, the U.S. consulate in Tijuana put out a message urging migrants not to come to the United States just yet. Carlo and Marcella. All right, Brandon, thanks. A 21 year old man accused of shooting and killing eight people at three different Atlanta area massage businesses is being charged with murder and assault. Despite the fact that nearly all of the victims were Asian women, investigators are saying race may not have been a factor. The gunman told police he has a sex addiction and saw the spas as a temptation. Local advocacy, advocacy groups are warning that these shootings, combined with a long list of recent attacks on people of Asian descent, will only get worse. It was just heartbreaking. Um, I think for an Asian American Pacific Islander community that's faced a lot um, in terms of racism, xenophobia over the last year, Overnight, the South Korean Foreign Ministry told CBS News four people killed in the tragic attack were of Korean descent. The first court appearance for the shooter is scheduled for Thursday morning. Tonight, we know the name of one of the victims from Monday's deadly crash underneath a bridge at City College. 40-year-old Rodney Diffendel was one of three homeless men killed when a suspected DUI driver jumped a curb and drove into an encampment. Meanwhile, this afternoon, community activists gathered to address our homeless crisis in light of the tragedy. The group says the crash was a direct result of the city's lack of initiatives in response to those struggling with homelessness and the pandemic. These are people, human beings. This is not just a civil rights issue. It is a human rights issue. It is a criminal justice issue. And it is an issue that we blame this government on. The medical examiner's office has not yet publicly identified the other two victims.
Today is San Diego County's first official day in the red tier. That means businesses like restaurants can officially reopen with limited indoor services. It's been a day that many have been waiting for. News 8's Tim Blodgett spoke with a couple of business owners about how they're handling things. Although there are a lot fewer people enjoying St. Patrick's Day on this year compared to a normal year, there are a lot more people out in restaurants eating corned beef and drinking Guinness than there were last year. Although many restaurants have had to abide by many different rules during the pandemic, now that the county has been placed in the less restrictive red tier, business owners are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. With corned beef and cabbage on the menu and Guinness on tap, things are starting to feel a little Irish at Hash House at Gogo in Hillcrest. The popular restaurant on Fifth Avenue has been keeping afloat by doing takeout orders and then expanding into outdoor dining. And as of yesterday, the restaurant is finally able to serve customers inside with 25% capacity. When you start really seeing the light out of the end of the tunnel, it's an amazing thing to be back open. Johnny Rivera is the owner of Hash House at Gogo. He says that he and his staff have made extra precautions before letting people back inside to eat. You know, not just with six feet away, but with, you know, all our silverware and plastic, you know, all our continual, uh, you know, app and, and computer support. I brought in a new item, which is uh, Haven UV light. Kills 99% of the coronavirus in the air. Like many restaurants, Pollo Grill and Otay Mesa had to adapt to the changes of the pandemic and were able to do so successfully. Now with indoor dining resuming, owner Victor Lopez is hoping to cash in on customers wanting to sit down and continuing the practices that kept his business afloat. Working with the third party apps, online ordering, which is very important. And now, like I said, going back to inside dining, um, we're going to be able to capitalize. And though there are around five tables available to eat inside Hash House at Gogo, the bulk of the customers were enjoying their meals from the patio outdoors, something that Rivera says just makes sense. You got to kind of look at the silver lining is that we were able to go into areas of the patio or outside that makes total sense because we live in San Diego. And uh, it's been actually one of the benefits of people enjoying outside when the weather's great. Though times have been especially tough for restaurant owners, San Diego County moving into the red tier is definitely a signal that things are moving in the right direction. In Hillcrest, Tim Blodgett, News 8. Thanks, Tim. And the red tier has restaurants and bars that serve food seeing green on this St. Patrick's Day. We stopped by the Blarney Stone Pub on Fifth Avenue in the Gas Lab around lunch. The place was already full of San Diegans covered in green, as you'd guess. The owner says, He's happy to be back open indoors just in time for this Irish holiday. Police say they will have extra enforcement out conducting DUI patrols, and they urge San Diegans to celebrate responsibly. The happiest place on earth is getting ready to welcome back guests. Disney officials announced today that both Disneyland and California Adventure will open on Friday, April 30th. The theme parks have been closed for a full year because of the pandemic. They will start operating at 15% capacity. Guests will be required to wear masks and follow other COVID protocols. Only California residents will be allowed to visit for now, and you have to have a reservation. You will soon be able to enjoy a night out at the movies. AMC Theaters announced all eight locations in San Diego are reopening this Friday, March 19th. Under the red tier, theaters can open at 25%. AMC says it is committed to the health and safety of its guests and has added several safety features, including social distancing and automatic seat blocking. Mandatory mask wearing, routine sanitizing and upgraded air filtration systems are also in place. The county just posted new COVID numbers with cases and testing up slightly over previous days. Today, 411 new cases are being reported out of more than 13,000 tests for a positive rate of about 3%. That's in line with the rolling average. Hospitalizations and ICU patients both decreased slightly. Eight more deaths, though, were reported. The county is also reporting 27% of eligible San Diegans have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, and 17% are now fully vaccinated. Today, President Biden held the annual presidential St. Patrick's Day meeting with the Irish Prime Minister. They discussed how they're recovering from coronavirus and the road ahead to strengthen global health. The holiday is significantly more visible this year with some bars opening up to the public after being completely closed over the last year. Meantime, COVID testing is ramping up for younger kids looking to return to in-person school.
Today, the Department of Health and Human Services announced plans to distribute $10 billion to support COVID-19 testing in schools across our country. Today, Dr. Anthony Fauci said high school age children should expect to get vaccines around the start of fall with younger children around the new year. Today marks the deadline to submit petition signatures in the effort to recall Governor Gavin Newsom. Nearly one and a half million signatures are needed to force a special election. Organizers of the recall say they have collected more than two million signatures. State officials will have until April 29th to verify if there are enough valid signatures. It could take until September to set an election date if it qualifies.